kick that around. See if you call in about that. James in Ottawa, you're on the line. Thanks, John. Um, I have quite a I have quite a bad cold, so boy, I hope, boy. <clears throat> but I just felt like I had to call in on this one. So please forgive me if I'm a bit more scattered than usual and even more difficult to understand. Look, the first point I want to make is that, please, there's no such thing as ISIL. That Obama is the only person that uses that term. It is the Islamic State. That's what they call themselves, and that's what it is. And it's demonstrably that. Well, so, what's the L? What's the L? Levant. Is he, he's trying, what, what Obama's trying to do, and he's also clearly convinced the leaders of the coalition to use the term also because he's trying to whitewash the Islam out of it. But it is the Islamic State, and uh, we can discuss that if you want. But anyway, I just want to say that's the right term for it, and it should be used. Now, treason, okay, before the coalition, before Canada was officially, whatever we are, it seems to me, officially at war, well, then that wasn't treason, but and it would be denying people's right of exit if they wanted to leave and go do whatever they want overseas. I think right of exit is a basic basic right of a democracy. Doesn't mean you have to let them back in. Well, that's uh, my point. But but you should certainly let them go. But now that we are at war officially with the Islamic State, I think if these people clearly want to go fight on the other side, there's no question that it's treason. And and I think if Harper were to sell it right, which means honestly, there'd be no political cost to charging them with treason, except that every one of them would be Islamic or recently converted to Islamic. But so he'd end up taking heat on that. But it would be, I think, sooner or later, the truth ends up winning. So that you know what, James? I think the majority of Muslims in this nation would would rise up and cheer if he did that. Well, we'll, we'll maybe we'll get a chance to find out. Now, you also asked another question. Um, it was it had to do with you know there was a huge set of roundups around the world. There was Australia, Germany, Norway, and even in Canada, where over the last four or five days, a whole bunch of people have been rounded up and charged. And in, in the case of Canada. We convicted and sentenced a guy on Friday who had 50 bombs. He was building 50 bombs here in Ottawa with, as I understand it, the intention of detonating those 50 bombs at random people here in the city of Ottawa. Most people don't even know about it. Well, that's the problem that we're having is because we don't think there's a problem because we won't inform each other. And when we do, we don't do it right. Let me give you a really good example. What would you say was the first major Islamic terrorist attack in Canada? First major Islamic oh, attack that was resulted in over a dozen deaths. Oh, in Canada? Yes. Well, you got me, James. Yeah, I'd have everybody. Well, well the, and not in Canada. I mean, there were Canadians killed at 9-11. No, I'm talking about right here Canadian in Canada. Oil, yeah. I couldn't tell you. It was the Col Polytechnique, where a, 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 man, a religious Muslim, who I forget his original name, but the papers referred to him as, I think, Mark Lapine, where he murdered 22 women at a girls' school because he felt, as his religion taught him, and as his father, the Moroccan, either Moroccan or Algerian Muslim, taught him, girls should not be educated in any. Sure. Other than Quran. James Lapine, that's not his real name. His original name was a Muslim name. Look it up. I, you know, you know, I don't make these claims lightly. Look it up. That was an act of jihad, and that was utterly and completely buried. But a little bit of googling, and you'll find out. And why, why was a such a glaring, pertinent fact like that? Why has that not been more? Uh, uh, shouted from the rooftops here in Canada, if it's what you're saying is true, James. What a wonderful question. Next issue. Next issue, there's no such thing as a lone wolf. There are people who obey the calls of jihad, as it is specified in Quran and in the various different kinds of Islamic literature, and you'll see that the things they do are prescribed for them to do, because as Reliance of the Traveler says, that thing, that, that the things that you have to do when the goal is mandatory, then the, the, whatever it is you have to do to achieve that goal is mandatory. So, <clears throat> you know, what I'm saying is that the lone wolf is another way of distracting from the, the central ideology. Now, we didn't do this with the Nazis. We didn't do it with the communists. We didn't do it with any other ideology that was threatening our very existence and way of life. It puzzles me as to why we're doing it with this. And this is, again, this is not a racial thing. This is an ideolo ideology. How do you spell James Lapine? Mark Lapine. 
Mark Lapine. Okay, mm. I got it wrong here. Okay. Well, I'm going to do some research on that because that is that is mind blowing. Phyllis Chesler. Totally mind mind blowing. It's actually, Phyllis Chesler wrote a very scholarly and detailed article about this about five or six years ago. And there she, it is, even on Wikipedia. Mark Lapine, born Gamil Rodrigue Leaz Garby. Thank you. Yeah. That was Canada's first major act of jihad. And if you look at what, if you think about what you know about Afghanistan and Saudi Arabia and every other religiously Islamic state, what he did was perfectly consistent. Well, uh, yeah, Wikipedia describes him, though, as a non-practicing Muslim. Well, I guess it depends how you define practice. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that fact alone, that that was not his original name, I, I think that's, uh, uh, you know, that, that, is, uh, that is scandalous, that that information has been, has not been, uh, you know, the, the, there, there has been more inf investigation into that. You're absolutely right. It is scandalous. You know, how, you know how the feminists have used that to advance their cause. Well, I would, I would say that the feminists made him into practically the patron saint of the feminist movement. They used him to demonize an entire gender. Just like if you you know a minority of people which are males, and there's there are there are um, uh, monuments across Canada whose inscriptions violate Canada's own hate literature law act because they are so demeaning to men, and they were put up there because of that. But in fact, it was not an act by men against women. It was probably men who built the Ecole Polytechnique. It was probably men who were teaching those courses. It was probably men who were paying for those women to go to that school. So this wasn't about men versus women. It was about an ideology that says that women should not be educated. 